Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for our video on Microsoft Access Split Databases. In this video, I'd like to discuss what we mean when we say split an access database. Then I'd like to talk about why we might want to split an access database. And then we'll move on and talk about the various ways I've seen databases deployed and what a split database deployment looks like. So let's start off with what do we mean when we talk about splitting an access database. So here is an image of a database that has not been split. We have a single access database file, an ACCDB file, and it has contained within it all the various things you'd expect to find in an access database. You've got forms, reports, code modules, macros, queries, tables, they're all in the same single file. This is a fine arrangement to have if you have a single user database that you're going to have on, uh, let's say, your machine for your personal use or, or someone else's single machine for their personal use. So in a split database design, we have at least two databases involved. We have a front-end database that holds our forms, our reports, our code modules, our macros, and our queries. And we have what we call a back-end database that holds just our data tables. Not necessarily all the data tables, but, but any of the data tables that you expect your data to change often in. And then what we do is we link the front-end database to the back-end database. We do that, and we'll see that in a, in a later video but we create linked tables. So in the front end, you have table entries that look like tables, but they actually point to the tables that are in this back end database. And there are several reasons we might want to do this. One reason would be if you have a, a multi-user environment where you want many people to share one copy of data. You know, For instance, you wouldn't want person A changing data and person B not to be able to see that changed data. Another reason you might want to do this is ease of deployment. When you have a single database that has all your forms and reports and modules and tables in a single database, and let's say you're like me and you do your, your d developing on a machine at home and then you deliver your changes to somebody's workplace, that means when you deliver, you'll be carrying an access database with you on either a, an installation package or a thumb drive or something of that nature. If your customer has a single access database that contains data, you can't simply replace their version of the database with your version because your version isn't going to have the same data in these tables. If they've been using it for the last two weeks while you've been coding, they've been adding more, more data and changing data in these tables that you don't have reflected in your version of the table. So when you get there to your customer's location, you're going to have to import the changed forms from your machine, from your copy into their copy, and import the changed reports and whatnot, and et cetera, et cetera. It makes for a more difficult deployment. In a split design like this, all the user interface stuff is in this front end, and all the data is in your back end. You can take your copy of the front end, simply replace their copy with yours, and you're good. You haven't touched their data at all. It makes for a much easier deployment. One more note on the split database design. This design is a little more complicated in that in order for this to work, if you have a multi-user environment, in order for this to work, this guy right here is going to have to sit on some sort of or in some sort of central location, so you're probably going to need some sort of file server for this to, be, to, to sit on. Whether it's an external drive that everybody in the office can get to or whether you have a full-fledged network with a, a, a network server, this guy will have to sit in a central location that the rest of these people and then their front ends can get to. Okay, so we've talked about what a split database is. Now let's talk about how it might look when you deploy it. And what I want to start with is uh, I want to walk through several types of deployments I've seen and uh, start with a single combined database like this one and move on up to a full-fledged multi-user split database design that is more like a, a client server sort of arrangement. So often we'll see a single combined database deployed on a single person's PC. For instance, I have several access databases I have at the house that I keep track of things just for myself in. Nobody else needs to see them so they can sit on my machine, they can be combined, and there's no problem with that at all. Moving up in complexity, you could put single combined databases on multiple machines. However, if this person updates data in his copy, these two people can't see that changed data. You know, she updates her copy and her data, 
and neither of these guys can see it either and now you've got a mess okay and and don't try to fall back on replication now because replication has been deprecated in version 2013 so if you if you do this you you are not allowed to be a member of the cool programmers club okay please please do not do this now here is a single combined database that we have put on a file server and we have multiple users with shortcuts to this copy on the file server. We have multiple people opening the same combined database. Now I have seen uh, one successful implementation done this way and the reason I think it works is because it's rare for two people to have be to be logged into this database at the same time. If you're expecting multiple people to be in there at the same time this is probably not going to work for you. Multiple people logging into the same and interacting with the same user interface elements, the same forms and whatnot. Uh, I have seen uh, corruption occur and these databases get locked up. When one of these guys, for instance, gets the, the blue screen of death, it'll lock this guy up sometimes. Uh, there's a network hiccup and uh, you lose connection to your file server in the middle of some sort of operation. I've seen these uh, databases lock up. And when that happens, you need to have some sort of backup copy you can go back to and completely replace the database sometimes. So it can be finicky. It's gonna, this is going to work for you, I would say, in, in, in probably in rare instances you know, where it's going to be a very low volume, low usage uh, situation. And again, when you have this single copy, updating this copy, you've got the same, the same issues we already discussed about how you're going to deploy your changes to it. So moving up in complexity again. We'll go up to our split database design. Now here I've put a split database and put both databases on a file server. So you have multiple users, all shortcuts pointing to the same front end and the same user interface elements. And then this front end, of course, points to the back end database with tables. Again, the problems you'll have with this one are, are similar to the problems you'll have with this one. Okay, you have multiple users logging into the same front end database. So again, you're going to have potential corruption issues when you have any you know, these guys have, have issues with their machines while they're in the middle of doing something on this, on this database. It can lock it up and corrupt it and, and kill it. You'll have to replace it, replace this copy in order to get it uh, fixed. Network issues, whatnot. However, having said that, I do have two installations in the field of the same database where in both cases they are, are they are, they have this arrangement, they are serving it. Uh, from a Citrix server, okay, and Citrix takes care of all of this divvying up different copies to different users. This works very well. I've never had a corruption issue on either one of those cu customers, and they have this exact arrangement, but it's Citrix that is handling uh, giving different copies to different users as they need it. And this version works pretty well. And our last arrangement or paradigm, if you will, is a, a, a a split database design that emulates a client server arrangement. And this is where we put a copy of the front end on each user's PC and then we have the back end by itself on the file server. Each of these front ends and is linked to the back end via the network. Now I will say that this is faster than this. When you have the front end on a server in order for these guys to open, even start the database, quite a bit of this front end has to go across the network into this user's PC before the data, the, uh, their instance of access can even start up and get running. All the forms or any of the forms they want to be using, any of the code modules need to be used, those all have to go across the network to the PC before they can really start using the database. Anytime they open a new form, again, the form's got to go across, and the query's going to execute after that. In this version, you don't have that. And I can say, I can safely say from direct observation that having these forms and queries and reports on your hard drive speeds up access significantly. I can, you can visually see uh, a, a, an increase in speed when you do it this way versus having both the front and back end on the same file server. Having said all that, nothing is clear cut. Okay, in this instance now, we say we've got easier 
deployment in that when I want to replace these front ends, I can simply bring my new front end and copy over these guys. And that's true. However, that can become cumbersome. Okay, that's fine if there's two or three people and they're all in the same office, but what if you've got, you know, 30 users? That can become cumbersome, okay? That's when you might want to move to some sort of installation package or perhaps some sort of automated update. I've got uh, one in the field where the users actually have two databases, two front ends on the machine. Their shortcut points to what I call a version checker, and it starts up, and it checks to see if the other front end on their machine is the same version as like a master copy I have on the server. And if it's the same version, then the version checker opens that database and they start to use it. If it finds that the version on their machine is is less than the master copy that I put over here, and that version checker performs a file copy, copies a new one to their machine, and then starts it up. But at any rate, if you're going for a split database design, I would encourage you to try to go towards this version. This version is going to be, I believe, the fastest for you, and in the end, probably give you the, the least amount of complication in deployment and in user experience. I think they'll, you'll find it's faster and users will be happier with it. Okay, so that's all I have for this video. I wanted to cover what a split database is and why we might want to do it and how it might look in high level terms. And the next couple of videos I intend to show how to split an existing database and how to build a split database from scratch. Uh, we're going to cover setting a password on our database and how to deal with that in split databases. And I want to show the VBA that we use to see the connection strings to our linked tables. Uh, that would be the link from our front end uh, pointing to the back end. In the video after that, I want to combine what we learned there about how to deal with the connection strings and see them and reading text files from the last video series. And we're going to build uh, some code that runs at startup that can automatically relink your front end to your back end and that's code that I use when I deploy databases. So for instance I have a copy of a database on my machine at home and it's linked to a database on my machine at home and that's a completely different folder structure than my clients have their machines in their office. So of course when I take my copy of the front end and drop it onto their machine in the office it can't find the back end and they're at their office because it's, it's still looking for the links that are pointing to the, the back end on my machine at home. So that code runs and automatically finds the back end on their machine in their office. I don't have to do anything about it. It just runs automatically. It makes deployment of updates very, very much easier than having to manually relink and use that, use that linked table manager. And after that, I'm not positive. I might do a video on that version checker uh, that I just discussed a couple minutes ago. So anyhow, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.